now that I've said that I kind of want to try doing it, but not today. Maybe another time though. Greetings fellow humans and welcome. What are we doing today? You may ask. I shall tell you. Today I'm going to be taking this book and attempting to lovingly restore it to its former glory. It means a lot to me because my granddad used to read A. A. Milne poems and stories to me when I was a little kid. In fact, I read a poem from this book at my grandfather's funeral in 2013. Unfortunately, at some point in time, its back cover got torn and whoever tried to repair it did so with the best intentions, but not particularly expertly. It was stuck back on with sellotape and unfortunately, the last time I moved, it just gave up the ghost and the sellotape fell off, back cover fell off, and I was very sad and didn't really know what to do. So I did some research and discovered that it is entirely possible to rebind books. I found a blog post with some instructions that I will link in the description. The blog post that I read laid out some quite specific tools that you need and I don't have any of those, I don't think. It says that you need some kind of rubber-based adhesive. That we have covered. We'll give it a go. Fingers crossed it goes okay because I really don't want to ruin this book from my childhood that is attached to many many memories. This is one of those moments where I worry if this project was a bad idea, but I've committed now, so I'm seeing it through. The first thing I did was gently separate the front cover from the pages. There are tools that you can use for this, but I didn't have those, so I very carefully used the handle of a scalpel and my thumbnail to try and break up the glue and pull away the front cover. Then I cut away any remaining glue and paper from the spine. Next, I marked out and cut a new edge on the front cover and the back cover, making sure both were as square as possible, but there were little bits here and there that needed cleaning up. I took an A4 piece of paper and marked out the back, the spine, and the front of the book's pages, then carefully drew lines to fold the paper along to create a nook for the book's spine to sit in. I then marked where I needed to cut the paper, carefully cutting along those lines with my scalpel. I drew guidelines for myself so I'd know where to fold my paper, using the handle of my scalpel very carefully because I didn't want to cut myself to get a really clean, crisp fold. I tested to make sure the spine fit and then marked the top and the bottom. I took some thicker paper, somewhere between letter paper and cardstock, to make the cover for the spine, marked out and cut that to size, and again I drew fold lines for myself so that it would fit the book's spine. I found the indentation left by the pencil mark made it much, much easier to fold accurately. Then it was time to start gluing up. The blog's instructions and the instructions on the copydex bottle were both very clear that you needed to add adhesive to both of the things that you wanted to bond together, so I painted copydex onto the paper sleeve, making sure to go a little over where the corners of the spine would sit so there would be a stronger bond, and on the spine of the book. I lined up the spine with the lines drawn on the paper and stuck the spine down, folded the front piece of paper up to meet the pages, and pressed all along it to adhere all of it together. I did the same with the back and then put it to the side to dry for a bit. It's worth noting if you've never used copydex or a similar type of adhesive, it absolutely stinks. It's really gross and you need to make sure you're working somewhere that's well ventilated, both for your safety and, to be honest, for your sanity. The original front and back cover of the book had a shiny surface and I wasn't confident that Copydex would adhere to it, so I took a nail file and sanded off a thin sliver of the shiny layer to make sure the glue had something to stick to. I stuck some bits of paper between the sleeve and the pages to protect the book from the glue and went to work painting on Copydex across the whole surface. I really wanted to avoid any blank spots because I wanted to make sure everything was well adhered. I did the same on the inside of the front cover, I did my best to line up everything as perfectly as possible, and stuck it down. I did the exact same on the back, but felt much calmer about it the second time around. I put paper down to protect the cutting mat, and popped some books on top to weigh it down while the glue dried. Fast forward a few hours, and it was spine time. Again, I put copy decks on both surfaces I wanted to stick together. I was a little bit liberal with the glue on this, as I discovered when I started pressing down across the whole spine protector, there was quite a lot of squeeze out that I needed to remove as best I could. I then rubbed over the corners of the spine to smooth them down and make sure the paper I added did adhere to the book's spine. Put my books back on top to weigh it all down for a while, and then came back later to clean up all the last little imperfections.
Ta-da! It's done. It's finished. I think I had this idea that bookbinding was some kind of mystical art that I'd be incapable of doing. And to be fair, I am very aware that actual proper bookbinding in terms of like sewing pages together and creating a book entirely from scratch is very complex. And now that I've said that, I kind of want to try doing it. But not today. Maybe another time though. I'm so happy I repaired this. It has a nice new reinforced spine. It's a book again, basically. It was a very straightforward project. I didn't really hit any specific snags. The only thing was, I don't know if you can see, there's a tiny bit of copy decks like squeezed out over here that's like a little rubbery nodule thing going on. I was really worried about things not sticking so I really slapped the copy decks on in some places and I probably could have been a lot more careful about how much I actually put in. Nevertheless, it's pretty cute. I'm really glad that I had paper to match the text box that the title is in. Part of the reason that I chose the blue to go inside was to kind of match the blues on the cover. So I did think things through with this project, which is surprising. I don't usually plan that carefully. I hadn't done this yet when I took the footage of the finished book. So technically I guess it wasn't completely finished, but I have handwritten the title and the author on the spine of the book because I want to be able to see what it is when it stood in my bookshelf. And I suppose I would have known because how many baby pink paper spines are going to be in my bookshelf, but other people wouldn't have known and now they do. And I can explain to them how excellent I am because I rebound a book. I don't invite people to my house very often, ever let alone during a pandemic. This one was kind of a short and sweet project, which I definitely needed after last week's mammoth sewing project, but it was still very satisfying and I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed watching me try and figure out how on earth to do this. If you did, then please give this video a like, maybe subscribe to my channel, who knows? If you're curious as to what else I'm gonna get up to, then definitely subscribe and click the little bell thingy. Maybe give this a share, why not? Next week I have a bigger project. It is vaguely Christmas themed. It's not really Christmas themed, it's tangentially Christmas themed. It's like goths do Christmas, maybe related to a specific film that is very goths do Christmas. That's it, not giving you no more clues. I'm excited though. Thank you for coming with me on this strange journey. I appreciate that you spend time here when you could be spending time literally doing anything else. It means a lot to me, it genuinely does. I hope everything is okay in your world, poking myself in the face with a book, and I will see you guys next time. Like a reasonable person does. Do the ending. I'm a reasonable people. So sorry. I am a reasonable people. It's really hard. The camera is here, but I can see myself here. And it's very, very challenging not to constantly stare at myself. I don't know if that's narcissistic or not. It might be. Apologies. Hmm. I need to do some thinking about that. Try again. Don't know what that was. Bye.